morning, friends. It's Sunday morning. I'm here with Travis, and he's got his glasses on, and I don't have glasses on. It's actually super bright out, as you're about to notice, so he... It's, it's just safety precaution. That's all it is. He's the smart one. This is not like a, I'm Mr. Cool for the video statement. It's literally I never so, wear these. so ever. bright. Ever. You can't even see him now because my camera's freaking out trying to figure this out. So this morning I'm going to tackle a the question I get all the time, even though I've somewhat answered it every vlog, but the basic question, how do I play drums like you, which is a funny question, but I think the root is, the root uh, question people have is how can I just get better, how can I consistently get better um, at playing drums. So I'm going to talk about that today along with some other things right after I get out of this sun. All right, we're pulling, we're about to pull in the church, but I'll ask Travis, maybe Travis can begin this by shedding some light. Travis, someone says, how can I get better at the drums? You can't even see him there in utter darkness. There he is. Hey, what advice would you give somebody that practice. wants to get better at the drums? You just gotta practice, man. Practice. You gotta, you know, focus and dedicate your time and your efforts. However, you know, however much better you wanna be, that's how much more time and effort you have to put into it. And it just comes with time, right? Practice. So that's the first thing to do. Uh, yeah, I would say um, if you wanna get better, like go back to the foundational stuff first. Are you practicing? Are you listening to new music? Are you working on rudiments? Are you working on technique? Because um, if you move away from those things and ignore those things, that stuff will eventually slip and you'll find yourself in a rut. So yeah. Number one, practice.
today I ended up um, having to talk back Mike. Um, Keith wasn't here. I was running the tracks and no one was really uh, excited to do it themselves. Like no one felt like I need to do it. So I just did it by default. So I didn't really get a chance to vlog, really talk about anything, but we had an incredible service. Worship just kind of took off. So we stayed in that worship moment. Um, you know, the guitar guys noodling right now. Um, so I'll play some of that worship, um, the worship set, and then I'll probably tag in with you guys here in a little bit and continue talking about what this vlog is actually about. Hey, what's up guys? So I figured I would just pick this up um, now that I'm at home. So today ended up being kind of crazy, it was awesome, but um, had a, just incredible service, but I ended up MDing um, the service, which thankfully there wasn't too much to do um, because everyone knew pretty much what they needed to do. So I'm not really able to call out numbers for everyone as, as quickly. I have a pretty good understanding of chord progressions, but not comfortable enough to really call numbers um, if we were flowing or whatever. So I had to talk back Mike. And I pretty much just called dynamics, um, reminded of parts we were going into or whatever. But we ended up really flowing out of the worship set into stuff that we didn't plan on. So just really incredible. Um, the worship service took over the service and we ended up kind of doing all that. So I'll, I'll play a lot of that. I'll show you a lot of that here. Um, but uh, it, it ended up being just an awesome service. So I wanted to interject this in real quick. Christmas is coming. And um, so uh, have some Christmas ideas. If you got a drummer in your life, you want to buy him a Christmas present. A um, couple things, um, super cheap things. There are, if they're getting into filming themselves at all, even on their phone, there are some super cheap iPhone lenses that just like clip on. They're crazy cheap. It's like 10 or 12 bucks. Um, but what they do is they allow you to capture a wide field of view where drums one of the hardest things is like framing the drums. Where do I, you know, where do I put the camera? How can I make this work? So I've got linked in the description um, some like super cheap lens attachments. So if you're looking for like a ten dollar gift for a friend or something, great thing. Also, um, like this little uh, iPhone clamp or phone clamp, right? So you attach this to like a little tripod, clamp your phone on there. Um, so that's also um, linked in the description below. It's like ten dollars. Um, and then also a like a drum key. You want to get every drummer likes drum keys. Um, Evans has a magnetic drum key, so it actually sticks onto the lugs of the drums for seven bucks on Amazon. That's linked below. Also, get them some Daniel Bernard DB Drums merch. Um, so I have a, I have a merch store. I haven't really talked about it that much, but it's live. I've updated it with some winter stuff. Um, but I'm actually not. I should have worn my shirt. That'd have been a smart thing, right? YouTuber, you wear your own own merch. But um, a lot of my merch just has my logo on it, which is just a drum, right? So kind of my feeling behind it. I don't like to wear stuff that has like huge brands on it necessarily. It's not my favorite thing. I do have some shirts, but I don't necessarily want. I didn't want a shirt that said Daniel Bernard's drum shirt, right? So um, my merch mostly is it just got that drum logo. So if people don't know it's DB Drums, then they just think it's a just a drum like you don't necessarily know now some people may know like oh cool that's you know Daniel Bernard's YouTube channel but the idea is just it's just like a drum shirt so I think they're super soft I got short sleeve shirts I do have one with like a sleeve print and then it says DB drums on the back I've got hoodies I've got some kids stuff I got beanies I've got tons of caps so check that out man uh, maybe you buy a drummer uh, some of my merch again linked in the description below and I've also got just some great stuff if they're into recording. I've got a link to this camera. Um, I've got this really awesome camera clamp. I've got this tiny little LED light that I'm using actually as kind of a little key light back here. Um, and it's incredible, it's like 45 bucks. So I've got a bunch of ideas if you wanna buy a drummer some gifts. Um, and I have tons of stuff linked down below, so make sure to check that out. Um, but I wanted to come back and talk about a couple things. So the intention I really started out with was talking about how to, um, get better at the drums and again it's kind of comical to me but the number one question I get is literally how can I play drums like you so um, I'm not arrogant enough to think that you know I am the pinnacle of what drums are but I understand that um, I have an exposure level that a lot of people see a lot of my stuff and and enjoy it and I'm thankful for that so um, I thought I could just talk um, a little bit about um, how to consistently get better so the first thing I would say is um, utilize the tools that are available to you so there's literally so much stuff available to you through YouTube, um, just YouTube alone that can be a game changer. But I understand that sometimes you can get lost in all that. You can't really focus in on things. So some things that really made a difference to me, I've shared some of before, but um, if you have the ability to invest in a program like Ableton, um, I would do so. Ableton Live because you can um, buy multi-tracks. So they have free multi-tracks where you can download them, solo the drum tracks, slow them down. So if you're just getting started, one of the most important things you can do is learn to listen critically. So that means if you're learning a song, you need to learn 
the album pattern, what the kick pattern is doing, you know, where the fills are, all that stuff. Um, so Ableton really helps you with that. But in conjunction with that, I think um, having a pretty good understanding of counting. So understanding counting quarter notes, 16th notes, I mean, quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, 32nd notes, kind of where they fit. Because if you can count it, then you can listen to something and count where it comes in. So for instance, when I play a fill, I don't, I'm not going to map out exactly each hit all the time. But in my mind, I know this fill is going to start on the and of two and maybe go over the bar to the and of one. Now I'm not, I get to the point where it's kind of second nature, but you begin that by going one and two and a three and a four and a one and, right? So the whole point is counting gives you that context, gives you those parameters to work in. So if you, right now you don't find yourself counting um, and you can't count along with an album and for you know figure stuff out, just playing by feel is not enough. You have to be able to count at least on a rudimentary level. Um, now I'm not saying you need to learn to read music to play in church. You don't. But if you can't count and hear 16th notes, then you're going to have a much harder time and much longer process to recreate sounds and songs that you hear. So taking counting and Ableton, YouTube, those things together, like for instance, I've shared this before, but one of the most influential albums on me just because of kind of the time it came in was Israel and Newbreed Alive in South Africa, right? Just It just kind of hit at this moment in time where I had access to some of the tracks on Ableton. I was able to solo the drum parts. You know, Big Mike Clemens stuff is... His placements are awesome, but not necessarily complicated. Like, he's not playing these crazy fast paradiddle grooves, uh, fills that you may hear Calvin Rogers do, where you hear it and you're like, man, I, you know, I, I don't even know where to begin. His stuff is more attainable, um, but the placement and rhythm are really cool. So, for me, that album was super influential because I literally played through that album all the time. So, um, kind of bringing it back in one, the fundamentals, counting, rudiments, that kind of stuff. You have to be able to count. You have to be able to understand, at least on a basic level, what rudiments do, how they can fit. Uh, and then I would pick up an album and play through a whole album. So even what's cool is some of the slower songs you may feel like aren't really going to help you. But what you'll notice is that drummers use certain patterns and you know repetitious ideas in a good way. They make stuff congruent. But you'll hear an idea in a slow song, and once you learn it, you'll begin to recognize that in other songs. And then all of a sudden, you've kind of unlocked their fills for other harder songs. So um, pick out an album, work your way through the entire album. And uh, really, I think it starts with just critical listening. I mean, once you listen to a pattern and you can recreate that pattern, you can play the song as it is on the album, then you can go from there adding your own flavor and your own flair. I would tell anybody, even if you're in a church where maybe your drums and bass don't lock in or we don't play things exactly like they are, you should like you know, make yourself accountable to the album, play it like that, and then you can go from there. So that's just some ideas on how to get better. And my story is not one of like child prodigy or did this. My story is literally just putting in hours and hours and hours and hours of work. Like that's all it is. Other people were playing 2K. I was playing drums, uh, you know, sports. I was playing drums. So, I mean, I'm not like, oh, I sacrificed so much. But the reality is I prioritized it. I just spent hundreds of hours just playing drums, practicing. So um, nothing replaces hard work or uh, nothing replaces reps, right? You got to put in the reps. You want to get stronger, you got to put in the reps. You want to get better at drums, you just got to put in the time. So maybe it was a little lengthy, but um, just wanted to share that um, with you guys. For me, that's the key to getting better is zeroing in on certain aspects, um, listening to the greats, learning how to recreate their sounds, and then you'll be inspired on your own um, to pick some stuff up. So I uh, hope that helps. Um, but again, today we had just a big worship set, uh, and that was awesome. I may post the whole thing it's in, in its entirety and not split it out, but you'll see kind of how we flow. Um, but man, thank you guys for watching this video today, tonight, whenever you're watching. I um, appreciate it. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, uh, maybe share it. Um, again, if you got like a worship team, want to share this set and the way we flowed, share it with a man. I think somebody would enjoy it. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subbed please do so. Follow me on Instagram, DK Bernard. A lot of times I'll post like on my stories, little questions like, hey, you have a random question? And uh, you know, that way you guys can ask some questions. But if you got a question, you got an idea, post it in the comments below. I'll respond to every single one uh, when I can. And what I've been doing, turn your notifications on because um, I've been hanging out in the comments for like an hour or two when a video posts. So if you you know, on that notification that I posted a new video, get in there, pop in a question. I'm right there um, paying attention and responding. So yeah, if you want to um, kind of interact a little bit more that way, uh, turn your notifications on. But um, I will see you guys probably next week, playing again next week. And uh, we are really getting into our Christmas program. So I'm going to talk about um, our preparation for our Christmas program, what we're doing and how we get ready for that. So anyways, 
I uh, hope you guys have a great day, whatever today is for you, and we'll see you in the next one.